All right, good morning, campers. This is Abe from Really Easy AI. It's time to go over news. I'm actually on the wrong article. Let's start here. All right, so let's start at the beginning. Uh, this is going to be your daily news for the day. Today is June 14th, 2024. Here's what we got for you. Spotify announces an in-house creative agency and is testing generative AI voiceover ads. So this one's pretty interesting. Spotify announced Thursday that it's venturing further into the ad space with its first in-house creative agency called Creative Lab, helping brands create custom marketing campaigns. So now Spotify is getting into the ad market, <coughs> which is a good idea because, as you can see, Spotify has 615 million listeners. Additionally, and this is the part that's interesting to us, Spotify is working on a new AI tool for advertisers, Quick Audio, which enables brands to create scripts and voiceovers using generative AI. So that's that's kind of their AI angle. And of course, we're seeing AI baked, baked into everything, but I thought this was interesting. I'll have this article so you can read more detail if you want, but that was item number one. Now, some more stuff. Let's talk about the G7. For those who don't know, the G7 Summit's going on now. Um, that's where all the leaders get together. And this year, I guess they're getting together in Fasano, Italy. Okay. Um, and, uh, so yeah, so it turns out that the CEO of Microsoft, Satya Nadella, made remarks at the G4 Summit. Well, so did the Pope. We'll get to that as well. But here we go. <coughs> Here's his remarks, a, a transcript of his remarks. Uh, I'll go through them real quick. Uh, basically, he just thanks, uh, everybody for being there in the first paragraph. Second paragraph... Uh, as this partnership recognized, we're entering in a very new age driven by AI, which has made clear the critical importance of both digital infrastructure and connectivity in every sector of the economy and every quarter of the world, as well as energy. There is no doubt that AI is one of the most transformative technologies of our time, and we believe it will fundamentally bend the productivity curve for every individual, organization, and industry sector to help us address some of our most pressing global challenges, including the world's low-income countries. All right. Uh, let's see. Moving on, just scanning the next the paragraph after that is just talking about how they want to help the world. This presents blah, blah, blah. And uh, here we go. Over the past three months, for example, we've invested $5 billion in cloud and AI infrastructure in Indonesia and Malaysia and Thailand, as well as Kenya. Together with our partners, G42 of the UAE, this, work, uh, this is work designed to drive that broad spectrum of economic growth, innovation, and connectivity. So basically, they're building out in cheap places where they can get cheap labor and making it sound like they're doing something awesome. Which actually, to be fair, is kind of cool. I'm sure those countries could use that infusion of capital. But don't fool yourself. There's, uh, the reason they're going to those places is because they can get cheap labor, too. Uh, so it's a win-win. We've also... Uh, no, no, just talking about the future of infrastructure, of course. And let me see what else. Okay, that's about it. So those were the main AI pieces, uh, which, you know... It's, we know this to be true, but it's, it's always interesting to hear it. This is the CEO of Microsoft addressing all the leaders of the world or all the key leaders of the G7. Now, turns out Pope Francis is over there at the G7 too. It's the first time a Pope has addressed the G7 ever. And for those who don't know, there was a, um, <laughs> there was a meme going around of the Pope in Balenciaga uh, code or something. It was called the Balenciaga Pope Mean. Let's see if I can find it so you guys can see what that looks like. Let's see here. Yeah, there it is. It has him wearing this uh, puffy coat. And so that's the Balenciaga Pope Meme. It was AI generated, but everybody believed the Pope was wearing that coat. So it pissed him off, apparently enough to go to the G7. So top line, Pope Francis is set to attend the G7 Summit on Friday, which is today, uh, and is expected to urge world leaders to adopt AI regulations, a subject the Pope has spoken about several times in the past, including after he was the subject of a viral AI-generated images that many believed were real. Yeah, I mean, it looked pretty good. 
So, key facts. The Vatican announced Pope Francis would attend the G7 conference in Italy uh, to discuss ethical concerns surrounding artificial intelligence during a session dedicated to AI, becoming the first pope to participate in the summit. Now, did you catch that other part? They have a dedicated session on AI. Well, of course they would. It is, it is fundamentally changing humanity. The Pope fell victim to AI in the past. AI generated deep fake images of the Pope in a white puffer jacket and bedazzled crucifix, dubbed the Balenciaga Pope, it went viral last year, racked up millions of views. Yeah, it was great. It was a good picture. Uh, he spoke about fake images during his speech in Vatican City on January, warning about the rise of images that appear perfectly plausible but false. I, too, have been the object of this. <laughs> Pope Francis has spoken about the danger of AI before, and he's expected to urge world leaders at G7 conference to work together to create AI regulations. Wow, that meme really pissed him off. Uh, during the G7 meetings, Italy is expected to advocate for the development of homegrown AI systems in African countries. Further work is expected to be done in the Hiroshima process, a G7 effort to safeguard the use of generative AI. And leaders uh, from places like the U.S. and U.K. are expected to promote AI regulations introduced in their countries, according to Politico. Giorgia Maloney, Italy's prime minister, said in a statement in April, the Pope was invited to the G7 conference to help make a decisive contribution to defining regulatory, ethical, and cultural framework for artificial intelligence. So you see what's happening here, right? You've got the Pope, you've got all the leaders. Everybody agrees there need to be some guardrails. Now, some of them get pretty hardcore, um, and some of them are light. We're going to have guardrails no matter what. Hopefully, it'll be on the lighter side. Uh, obviously, I'm, in, in, uh, I'm a huge proponent of just having uh, the minimum amount of guardrails possible. The Vatican also announced Pope Francis will have bilateral, bilateral conversations with leaders of other countries, including Joe Biden, President uh, Samariti of Kenya, India's prime minister. Boy, Kenya keeps coming up over and over and over again. There must be something big going on in Kenya because uh, they're building out data centers there. We're talking about AI, uh, these conversations with the Pope. So there, there's something happening there. All right. Okay, that's it. Uh, and then you can get into the detail later on, but wanted to bring that up. All right, moving on. Other news getting away from the G Summit. This one's seriously cool. AI candidate running for parliament in the UK says AI can humanize politics. So you've got a guy <coughs> um, uh, who created an AI avatar, and that avatar is actually running. So voters can talk to AI Steve, whose name will be on the ballot for the UK's general election next month to ask policy questions or raise concerns. Getting into the details a little bit, an artificial intelligence candidate is on the ballot for the United Kingdom's general election next month. AI Steve, represented by Sussex businessman Steve Endicott, will appear on the ballot alongside non-AI candidates running to represent constituents in the Brighton Pavilion area of Brighton uh, and Hove, a city on England's southern coast. AI Steve is the AI co-pilot, Endicott said in the interview, I'm the real politician going into parliament but I'm controlled by my co-pilot. Okay, interesting. Uh, and then it goes on. Endicott, of course, is into AI. He is the chairman of Neural Voice, a company that creates personalized voice assistance for business in the form of AI avatar. Neural Voice is uh, behind AI, Steve. Obviously, he's using this as a selling vehicle as well as kind of, a, he's, he's doing it to get press. It would be interesting and funny to me, though, if AI Steve got elected. Right, I'll leave that for you guys to dig into later, but I thought that was cool. Uh, some tech news from MIT. Uh, technique improves reasoning capabilities of large language models. Combining natural language and programming, the method enables LLMs to solve numerical, analytical, and language-based tasks transparently. Yeah, actually pretty cool. So <coughs> it's referring to a technique that we've all kind of known about in the data science space for a little bit, but they're starting to surface it now. Uh, first few paragraphs, they just get into the history of the GPTs. However, um, here we go. Researchers from MIT and elsewhere have proposed a new technique that enables large language models to solve natural language, math, and data analysis and symbolic reasoning tasks by generating programs. Their approach, called Natural Language Embedded Programs, or NLEPS, 
involves prompting a language model to create and execute a Python program to solve a user's query and then output the solution as natural language. In other words, they basically reinvented you know, what um, OpenAI has been for, doing for a while. You know, we have Code Interpreter, and Code Interpreter does that. It creates and runs Python code and then gives you the output in a natural language format. So they found that NLEPs enable large language models to achieve higher accuracy on a wide range of reasoning tasks. Yes, that is true. And on and on and on it goes. So basically, they're talking about what Code Interpreter already does. Uh, for those who aren't as familiar, um, ChatGPT, if you go into it, it has a special tool called Code Interpreter. And that, depending on the question you ask it, may actually write Python code, run that code against the data that you've given it, and give you nice natural language output. Now, just for completeness, I did include the paper here as well. I'll include the link to the research paper for those that are interested in doing a deeper dive. But again, kind of interesting that they're having those discussions about something OpenAI has been doing for a while. Continuing on, a former NSA head, speaking of OpenAI, uh, joins OpenAI Board and Safety Committee. So, yeah, a former head of the National uh, Security, uh, the NSA, National Security uh, Administration. Is that what NSA stands for? Hang on. National Security Agency. Okay, there we go. National Security Agency. So, former head of the uh, NSA joins OpenAI Board and Safety uh, I think we know what this one's about. This one's about getting better optics around uh, the safety of OpenAI, particularly lately since Sam Altman's been taking a beating um, from former employees, especially about the safety of the OpenAI initiatives. And so it looks like they've got uh, retired General Paul Nakasone uh, will join OpenAI's board of directors, the AI company announced Thursday afternoon, which was yesterday. Uh, he'll also sit on the board's security and safety subcommittee. <coughs> okay, good. Uh, this high-profile addition is likely intended to satisfy critics who think that OpenAI is moving faster than is wise for its customers and possibly humanity, putting out models and services without adequately evaluating their risks or locking them down. And then it goes on to get into the general's, you know, credentials. But there you go. I'll have that article for you as well. Uh, what else is going on? Well, PixArt partners with Getty Images to develop a custom AI model. Now, this is interesting. Getty Images is one of the bigger purveyors of stock images, right? They sell the stock images. So now you've got PixArt partnering with them. Um, so this should be interesting indeed. PixArt a photo editing startup backed by SoftBank announced on Thursday that it's partnering with Getty Images to develop a custom model to bring AI imagery to its 150 million users. The company says the model will bring responsible AI imagery to creators, marketers, and small business that use this platform. The model will be built from scratch and will be trained exclusively on Getty Images licensed creative content. The company says the partnership will enable PixArt subscribers to generate their own unique images with full commercial rights, which is pretty cool. Users will be able to use any of PixArt's editing tools to add or customize the assets. Huh. That's cool. I'm not familiar with PixArt. Let's see if we can uh, let's see if we can hit their website, maybe add that as a link for you guys. PixArt, free AI image generator. Okay, well, here it is. Uh, I'll go ahead and include that uh, link to PixArt so you guys can see that and play with it. Uh, not sure, you know, here we go. Um, uh, an image of a frog wearing a suit. Uh, generate that real quick. And let's see what we got. Okay, so it's got some interesting tooling. And where's my image? Okay, well, there you go. Generate images. What the heck? I have no idea. Okay, well, that's weird. It'll take a little getting used to. Anyway, I'll include that link for you guys, and then we can, uh, you guys can play with it. I need to play with it, too. All right, moving on. Uh, LinkedIn leans on AI to do the work of job hunting. Yeah, interesting. Now LinkedIn's getting into the AI uh, space. 
The Zeitgeist and Technology Day is all about AI. So in an effort to drive more users and uses, LinkedIn on Thursday, yesterday, took the wraps off a raft of new services powered by AI. The company is betting big on AI and people's appetite to see it threaded through experience of the platform is bringing tools that can do everything from helping people uh, look for and then apply for jobs. Yes, there's a tool to write the whole application and cover letter for you to surfacing relevant learning material about AI naturally and searching, searching all of LinkedIn to find what you need more quickly. We'll run through some of the bigger features here. <coughs> so here we go. Um, let's see. First, if we pointed out, this is not LinkedIn's first rodeo with AI. The company has been uh, threading the tech into its products from its earliest days. Uh, in fact, you, you could argue that there's very little that AI is not touching at the company. So that's the thing. All right, let's get into the, the features, though. Uh, da, 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 da. Well, I guess I thought they were going to get into the features. Now they're just getting into stuff. Uh, here we go. Okay, job searches and applications. We're getting a new way to search for jobs using conventional prompts. Still relies on the data in the job actually existing, but you'll be able to prompt your way to having you create, you know, your cover letters and all that good stuff. So that's pretty cool. Um, so here, for example, finding jobs in journalism in London that pays a salary of at least a hundred thousand may not turn up much, no matter how many ways you phrase it. Once you've found jobs and want to apply, you can now generate a cover letter or a letter of introduction. The AI will also give you a further review of your resume and other work. Okay, cool. Well, eventually you're just going to have AI talking to AI. Your AI will generate a cover letter. The, um, the hiring manager's AI will look at it, see if it looks good, and then respond. And then after all that uh, uh, back and forth has gone on, eventually you'll get to actual humans. A learning personalization. LinkedIn continues to be bullish on its video-based learning, so uh, it's uh, uh, and it appears to have found a strong current among users who need to skill up on AI. So now it's offering a ton of AI-related courses for premium subscribers. It's piloting what, piloting what it describes as expert advice powered by AI, tapping into expertise from well-known instructors such as, and then it lists some instructors. LinkedIn says its AI-powered uh, coaches will deliver responses personalized to users as a starting point. And that is it. Okay, so those were some of the big things. Uh, so obviously LinkedIn's getting into the AI game pretty big. So I like that. Now this next one's pretty cool. Continuing, uh, kind of leading off that LinkedIn uh, focusing on learning. Um, Amazon debuted, and this happened a few days ago, and I missed it. Amazon debuted two AI certifications to give you an edge in pursuing in-demand cloud jobs. So uh, for those that don't know, Amazon has, has had an AI certification for a while. It is a very difficult one to get a hold of. It is one I personally hold called the AWS Machine Learning Specialty. But it requires years of knowledge of data science and machine learning, and it is not an easy certification to get even then. I can attest to that. Having said that, it looks like what they're trying to do is provide some certifications along the way to that certification. And so they've introduced two new certifications. Let's get into those real quick. First is the AWS Certified AI Practitioner. You can see the logo here if you're watching on video. Otherwise, just trust me, it's, it's a cool looking AWS logo. And uh, organizations, this one's for low hanging fruit. This is for folks getting into AI and wanting to prove that they understand AI, right? Um, uh, organizations recognize that taking advantage of AI and gen AI will require a broader skill set. This includes professionals in marketing, sales, and project management, and so on. By earning this cert, uh, non-IT professionals can feel greater confidence when identifying opportunities that are well-suited to AI or when collaborating with technical teams. IT professionals with limited exposure to AI and ML and generative AI can make informed decisions. This might be a good one for um, folks in my beginner track to take. This might be something I, I might go ahead and take this maybe this weekend or something and uh, or whenever I get around to it. I'm kind of busy this weekend actually, but and see if it's something that maybe I should be pushing for folks because there needs to be some way for folks to really standardize and, and take some kind of recognition and you know we're all ai practitioners that's what i call all the folks listening to this now so maybe that would be an interesting one so let's i'll take a look at that 
Um, so this one's meant for low-hanging fruit for non-technical professionals. And then there's the AWS Machine Learning Engineer Associate, which is a, a, apparently a technical step towards the specialty that, that uh, they currently have. And so scaling AI models for real-time usage allows businesses to serve more uh, users and achieve results. This requires proficiency in ML engineering, it covers aspects like optimizing model performance, managing computational resources, updating model versions, and securing an AI solution. This certificate validates an individual skill in developing, deploying, maintaining, and monitoring AI and ML generative solutions. These are essential skills, blah, blah, blah. Okay. On August 13th, you can register for the beta exams of AWS Certified AI Practitioner an AWS a Certified Machine Learning Engineer. Oh, well, they're not out yet. Okay, so they've introduced them, but they're not out yet, so I can't do anything. But that, that AI practitioner looks like it would be pretty sweet for low-hanging fruit. And if some of you are more serious, use this as a stepping, to stepping stone for getting a you know, Machine Learning Engineer Associate as a stepping stone for getting the, the pinnacle one, which is Machine Learning Specialty with AWS. Okay, let's continue on. And I'll include uh, the link to this. I don't think you really need the link to my Credly certification. You all know I'm certified. Um, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, Eye on AI, legal tech funding getting AI upgrade. Now, this is interesting because we talked about this company uh, quite a while back. Uh, it was in the top uh, list of the top AI companies uh, that were out there. And this is referring to a company called Harvey. So very, very interesting. Uh, so last week it was reported artificial intelligence startup Harvey was looking at raising 600 million at a 2 billion valuation. Of course, news of a nine figure fundraise at a billion dollar plus uh, valuation is nothing new in AI. However, it's what Harvey does and what such a round could do to its industry, uh, uh, due to its industry funding that caught our attention. Harvey's platform helps with research and analysis of legal documents and is one of the growing number of generative AI startups in legal tech looking to take some repetitive, time-consuming, and mundane tasks off lawyers' plates. And that's the big deal. So apparently there are people who are willing to, or at least they're trying to find, uh, investment in it. Uh, legal tech startup funding is slightly down this year compared to last per crunch-based data. Though nearly half of the year, through nearly half the year, legal tech startups have raised only 356 million, compared to the 871 million VC-backed startups raised last year. <clears throat> I don't. I think that. Uh, I think it's probably just consolidation. Uh, we'll see how it plays out. I think there's absolutely going to be these things though, and so they just go on about uh, Harvey's funding and then other legal uh, startups that are getting funding, like Robin AI. DraftWise and Spellbook. So I'll leave this article for you, but the net net of that is we are definitely seeing um, a movement towards these legal AI uh, elements that are more deeply integrated. Of course we're seeing it, right? Like we've seen it everywhere else. And last, but certainly not least, AI startup Perplexity wants to upend the search business. News outlet Forbes says it's ripping them off. Now, when I read that, I was like, wait a minute, did Forbes subscribe to Perplexity and Perplexity's lying to them in some way? But that's not what's happened. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look. And uh, the artificial intelligence startup Perplexity AI has raised tens of millions of dollars from the likes of Jeff Bezos and other prominent tech investors for its mission to rival Google in the business of searching for information. And Right now, Perplexity is uh, you know, doing <laughs> better than Google. Google's getting a lot of negative press lately for their stuff, uh, especially the, you know, the infamous AI summaries of searches where you know, it, it tells you you can put glue on pizza and all that. We did a, I did a thing on that. Um, the article, artificial intelligence startup Perplexity AI has raised tens of millions of dollars from the likes of Jeff Bezos and other prominent tech investors for its mission to rival Google in the business of searching for information. But its AI-driven search chatbot is already facing challenges as some news media companies object to its business practices and tech giants Google and now Apple are increasingly fusing similar AI features into the core product. 
Perplexly CEO Arvind Sarinvasan, I don't know how to pronounce that, has spent much of the last uh, past week defending the company after it published a summarized news story with information and similar wording to a Forbes investiga- investigative story, but without citing the media outlet or asking for its permission. <clears throat> Forbes said it later found similar knockoff stories lifted from other publications. The Associated Press separately found another perplexity product feature inventing fake quotes from real people, including a former elected town official from Martha's Vineyard, falsely quoting to say he didn't want the Massachusetts island to become a destination for marijuana. Uh, I never said that, said Bill Rossi. So we've got some issues here. So what this is meant to do, apparently... Uh, and this is from ABC News. They're a news outlet, so they have a vested interest and a bias towards, you know, perplexity not doing things a certain way. However, perplexity, if perplexity is in fact doing what Forbes claims they're doing, uh, then that's bad too. So this this looks like there's no winner here. Uh, we'll have to see. Now, for those who aren't familiar with per- perplexity, um, it has been out for a while. Uh, perplexity AI. And uh, they have, in fact, been trying to rival uh, Google in terms of their search. So here's what it looks like. I'll include the link to it uh, in the description as well. So links to all these news articles are in the description. That is your news for the day. This is Zane. I'll see you next time.